So we are reporting, updating on two reporting periods today, April 18th to 19th and then 19th to uh, midday today. So for our first period from Saturday to Sunday, we had 29 new cases test positive here in British Columbia. And uh, in the past 24 hours, we've had an additional 23 people. So that brings our total up to 1,699 people who've tested positive for COVID-19 here in British Columbia. And our total new cases since our last report on Saturday is 52. That includes 700 people in Vancouver Coastal Health Region, 705 in the Fraser Health Region, 102 in the Vancouver Island Health Region, 153 now in the Interior Health Region, and 39 people in Northern Health. In terms of outbreaks, we have one new facility outbreak, a long-term care facility, um, Chartwell Willow Long-Term Care. Um, we now have, uh, that brings us up to 20 uh, long-term care or assisted living facility outbreaks and one in an acute care uh, centre um, with 307 cases uh, associated with those outbreaks. We have a number of resolved outbreaks including uh, one at the Delta View long-term care home in Fraser Health and uh, the uh, outbreak we had at the Okanagan Correction Centre, the Provincial Correction Centre in the interior where we had uh, just a single case identified and uh, we've gone through the incubation period with no further cases being identified there. Um, the other outbreaks that we've been following, uh, there's no change to the agricultural uh, centre outbreak in the interior. We are now up to 75 people with COVID-19 associated with the Mission Federal Institution, including 64 inmates. In addition, we've uh, now come to understand that there has been transmission um, to people who have come back to BC associated with the, the Curl Lake project in Alberta that's north of, of Fort McMurray. We have seven people that we've identified directly related to that and uh, additional people are, are ongoing and being tested and we know from our colleagues in Alberta that an ongoing outbreak investigation is happening in that community and there's concerns about uh, people who may have traveled um, to other provinces as well as here to British Columbia. And right now I am ordering anybody who has been in the Curl Lake project since March 15th and has returned to British Columbia that they must self-isolate for 14 days after their return. For many people this will mean their return was um, over 14 days ago. If they had symptoms during that period of time or they continue to have symptoms, we want you to connect with 811 and tell us about that. Um, as well, anybody who has returned in the past two weeks must continue to self-isolate um, until the incubation period has passed. And if you do develop any symptoms, then again to call 811, to call your health care provider or your local public health office so that we can have you assessed and tested if need be. We recognize as well that some people who were in Alberta and have returned and had some illness may have family members who are now um, suffering from some illness related to COVID-19. If that is the case, then we again would like you to call 811 so that we can assist you in um, being assessed and understanding if this indeed is COVID-19. Both Interior Health and Northern Health have had individuals who've come back and tested positive from um, the, the outbreak in Curl Lake and they are doing a contact tracing and have identified all of the close contacts of those individuals that we know about at this point. We expect there will be more people. We know that there is people coming back and forth um, between uh, places in Alberta and here on a regular basis as part of the essential work that they do. We also want to remind people that we have fairly extensive guidance in place for these types of camps and, and industrial, um, uh, industrial settings here in British Columbia and we are continuing to ensure that the guidance that we have provided to make it, these camps as safe as possible and to identify anybody who might have illness as early as possible that those guidelines are being followed um, closely. 
in terms of the cases we have in British Columbia, we have 104 people who are now in hospital, and of those, 49 uh, remain in the critical care or ICU. On a sadder note, we have had five additional deaths in the past two days, three on Saturday and two yesterday, bringing our total to 86 people who have died from COVID-19 here in British Columbia, and our hearts go out to their families. We have, as well, 1,039 people who have now fully recovered from COVID-19. There are a number of things that have been uh, on, in the works over the last few weeks, and I want to talk about a few of them right now. One, uh, the announcement earlier today of our rural, remote, and indigenous support strategy, that uh, the framework that has been underway for, for some weeks, but the Premier announced this framework today, and it is welcomed by um, us as a way to recognize and proactively support our communities um, that may have had limited access to the level of health care that we find in the larger urban areas. It, it enables us to provide more um, on-site testing and faster access to both to testing and to primary and urgent care and other supports, and to coordinate that effort and response across the province. And very particularly, it is one of the things that we are doing. Um, it infor forwards the important work we're doing together on reconciliation, recognizing that our fish First Nations and Indigenous peoples in BC come from a place um, where they have not had um, as much of the supports um, that we've had uh, in other parts of our, our society here. And they have been severely affected in past pandemics. Um, in British Columbia and Canada and around the world. So this is an important step to making sure that we put in the appropriate extra supports they need and particularly to focus on protection of our elders in our First Nations communities, recognizing the vital role that they play in maintaining culture and language in many communities around the province. Additionally, I wanted to talk again about our testing strategy. As you know, and as I've mentioned a, a couple of times in the last few days, we evolve our testing strategy based on our changing situation here in British Columbia. And early on, we had a very broad testing strategy, testing particularly returning travelers and making sure we were very sensitive about finding anybody who might have the disease here in BC. Plus, we had a community testing strategy um, based on our influenza surveillance network. When we started to get more community spread, we um, transitioned our testing strategy to focus on the highest risk and most vulnerable areas, so particularly outbreaks, those who were critically ill or needed hospitalization, healthcare workers, and people in long-term care. We're now using testing again, and as of about 10 days ago, to help us quickly identify and address any new community cases and outbreaks. And for example, um, picking up the cases of people who had returned from um, places like Alberta. We want to avoid another spike in community cases, and that's why we are changing the strategy again to um, open it up and ensure that we continue to find everybody who needs to be isolated and where we need to do contact tracing in the province. So right now, anyone with symptoms of COVID-19 can now be assessed and tested either through your family physician, if you have your nurse practitioner or a local community collection center. And you can call 811 to find out where those are. While everyone can get tested, not everyone needs to get tested, and that's very important. If you do not have symptoms, this test is, has very limited benefit and is not necessarily valid. So it is for anybody who has symptoms now of COVID-19, so cough, fever, shortness of breath, those are the things that we're concerned about. Or if you've had contact with somebody um, who you know has COVID-19 or has been associated with one of the outbreaks that we know. So now's the time where you can, where we've broadened again our testing so we have a better idea of anyone in our community who may have COVID-19 going forward. And this, of course, is part of our strategy for where we are going to go as we continue to bend and, sh and flatten and um, stop the transmission in our community. And there's been many questions about how things are going to change and when. And we are not yet through this storm. We must remain vigilant, and our testing strategy is part of that. We can only make those changes that we want and need to do 
when we have a sustained downward trend in people who are getting sick with COVID-19 in our province. And as we've said, we are not expecting any changes in April. And if we look at the trajectory and the modeling that we presented, we're looking at the middle of May if things continue to go the way that they have been going. We've been learning from other jurisdictions and we've been doing a lot of thinking about what this will look like and how we can do it in a measured way that gives us that, that bit of space um, between opening things up and finding a new normal to get us through the next few months versus um, opening things too fast and having people come together and getting exponential spread of this virus in the province. So our new normal for the next coming months will still have restrictions. Restrictions on numbers of people who go to weddings, to funerals, regular religious observances and gatherings. Restrictions on things like concerts and festivals and parade and on travel, both within BC and beyond. We will continue to require everyone to follow orders, including our gatherings. And as we've talked about, having gatherings as small as possible. The order says no more than 50, but that's only if you can maintain those physical distances between people and you have the other um, appropriate things in place to prevent um, opportunities for transmission. Keeping our distance from our elders and seniors and those who are more vulnerable to severe illness from COVID-19 will continue to be essential. Avoiding non-essential travel, although we want to make sure that we have opportunities to connect with our families, our friends, our support networks in a way that we're not doing right now when we're still in the middle of the storm. Absolutely being incredibly sensitive to staying home and staying away from others if we have any sort of illness at all. It's self-isolation as we need. We need to think about how we can manage our businesses, how we can manage opening things up within those parameters and how the essential businesses are operating today is a model that we can think about for going forward. And businesses, different sectors need to start thinking about that now. How can you continue your business in a modified way? And it may be hybrids for the coming time. Things particularly making sure that anybody who is ill is not coming into your business, including your employees. Physical distancing, maintaining our safe distance from each other. Limiting workers and customers and the numbers of people on site. Using technology to work in the ways that we've learned in the last few months and ensuring you have enhanced hand hygiene, enhanced cleaning abilities. Our new normal is going to be a modification of the things that we have had in place for the last few months. We also need to recognize that it's going to be, um, it's going to be trial and error and a challenge for us to, to find that important sweet spot where we can maintain um, some connections without putting ourselves and our community and our health system at risk. So we will be talking more about this in the coming weeks and coming up with plans together to get us through this next phase of our outbreak, our pandemic. We now, though, must continue to hold our line. I understand the, the hardships and the sacrifices that we have all made in the past six weeks, and we have to ensure that we don't let up too soon and waste all of that important work that we have done together. So I want to thank everybody for what you have been doing and what we will continue to do together and to remind you to be kind and we're doing this, to be calm and to be safe.